Uh, thank you, uh, honourable members, uh, for the benefit. A, a warm welcome to uh, members of the public who are listening in on this uh, uh, live uh, live stream uh, this this hour. Um, before us, we have uh, uh, Ministry of um, uh, Foreign Affairs, um, uh, ably led by uh, Mr. Peter Peter Emerson. Welcome, sir. Um, for the benefit of the general public. Uh, the submission before us this morning uh, by the um, uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs is uh, on the uh, uh, Madrid Agreement, um, which was established in 1891 to provide a mechanism that would allow for a single and inexpensive international trademark uh, registration and to eliminate the need for filing, prosecuting and or maintaining separate uh, registrations in multiple countries. It came into force in 1892. Fiji's intellectual property laws, IP, date back to 1933. Fiji is in the, in the process uh, of modernizing its IP laws, hence the three bills endorsed by cabinet uh, on 31st March this year. Uh, the, the bills are the Trademarks Bill 2020, the Patents Bill 2020, and the Designs Bill 2020. Also, the Madrid Protocol was established in 1989. It was created to address perceived defects in the Madrid Agreement and to make the international system of registration of marks more flexible and compatible with the domestic legislation of individual states. The Paris Convention was established in 1883. It was created to provide protection for industrial property, including patents, trademarks, trade names, industrial designs, utility models, service marks, geographical indication, and to repress unfair competition. Um, honorable members, uh, we uh, have uh, before us uh, Mr. Peter Emerson and his team. Uh, for your benefit, sir, we, we, my, my um, committee, uh, the uh, Defense and um, Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, made up of Honorable Dr. Salik Govin as Deputy Chair, Honorable Selai Andimaitonga, and Honorable Pio Tigandundo, and myself, Alex O'Connor, as your Chair. Uh, honorable Members, um, Mr. Peter Emerson, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair um, O'Connor. Uh, before us, uh, I have uh, uh, our Principal Foreign Service Officer, Ms. Kelini uh, Seruwatu, Ms. Uh, Karen Gibson, and Ms. Uh, Rhoda Banner. And together we will be making this uh, presentation. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the honor uh, to make this uh, presentation on the three important uh, treaty regimes that uh, you have alluded to, uh, sir. I will now hand it uh, to uh, Ms. Uh, Kelini Seruwatu who will be leading us on the first part of our presentation before she hands over to uh, Ms. Gibson. Thank you again, uh, um, Honorable Chair, for the introductions. And I will now hand to Ms. Servato. Vinaka um, Chair and uh, members of the same committee um, on behalf of the Minister for Foreign Affairs and the Acting Permanent Secretary for Foreign Affairs. It's our privilege to, to come before you this morning to present our submission on these, um, these multilateral treaties. Uh, for the purpose of uh, this presentation, the Ministry has opted to merge the Paris um, Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property and the Madrid Agreement and Protocol in highlighting the significant implications of Fiji's ratification of these treaties on the global context and the sustainable development agenda. By way of background, um, just to complement the facts that you have um, rightly and sufficiently highlighted pertaining to these uh, two multilateral treaties, um, Honorable Chair and the members of the committee, uh, just reiterating, um, as has been said earlier, the Paris Convention uh, for the Protection of Industrial Property, 1883, is one of the earliest multilateral treaties, which is still in force to date. And the convention applies to all aspects of industrial property. 
such as the application of patents, trademarks, industrial designs, utility models, service marks, trade names, geographical indications, and the repression of unfair competition. And of course, the Madrid system, which comprises of the two, the Madrid Agreement concerning the international registration of marks, 1891, and the protocol relating to the Madrid Agreement, 1995, are both uh, essential and significant pieces of multilateral uh, legislation and arrangements that complement the Paris Convention. The Madrid system, we would like to highlight, makes it possible to protect a mark in, in a large number of countries by obtaining an international registra registration that has effect in each of the designated contracting parties. Together, chair and members of the, the committee, together the Paris Convention and the Madrid system provided holistic protection of Fijian intellectual property. Allow me to speak to the global governance structure of uh, intellectual property, that is the World Intellectual Property Organization, uh, in which, which Fiji joined in 1972. Uh, WIPO, as it is known in short, is a global forum for intellectual property services, policy, information, and cooperation. And Fiji has also acceded to a number of WIPO-related treaties, such as the WIPO Convention in 1971, the Berne Convention 1971 as well, the Rome Convention 1972, the Phonograms Convention, as well as the TRIPS, the Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. Fiji is a member of the WIPO General Assembly, the WIPO Conference, and the Berne Union. And the Fiji Permanent Mission to the United Nations Organizations in Geneva are accredited to WIPO, and represent Fiji and WIPO related matters. Distinguished Chair and members of the committee, we would like to speak to, to why Fiji should ratify the Paris Convention along with the Madrid system. The Paris Convention, as we have been um, sufficiently um, informed, through this, this process, the Paris Convention guarantees the protection of intellectual property beyond our national borders by having our local patents, our trademarks, designs recognized and protected in other countries. And we believe that it is a key, key that the convention is key to countering unfair trading practices, such as in situations where foreign industries would replicate and manufacture local patents without our consent. The convention also safeguards our infant industries and local designers in light of the substantial demand for trade on the IT platform for e-commerce. As for the Madrid system, chair and members of the committee, as we have also um, been informed through this process, the Madrid system also allows a person to register a trademark with any intellectual property office. This registration enables the IP office, in short, to internationally register their trademark via the WIPO Madrid system. In ratifying the Madrid system, Fiji will join more than 100 countries to represent more than 80% of world trade with potential for expansion as membership grows. This is another opportunity that Fiji may wish to explore through its subscription to these, um, the Paris Convention and the, the Madrid system. I will now speak to the significance of intellectual property in, sustain, in the context of sustainable development. And on this, Chair and members of the esteemed committee, we wish to refer to, to the comments and the sentiments of the WIPO Director General in saying that intellectual property as a policy exists to create an enabling environment for and to stimulate investment in innovation to create a framework in which new technologies can be traded around the world and shared. Chair and members of the committee, this is um, the crux of the issue that we have uh, before us this morning in, in Fiji's ratification of these, these multilateral treaties. Intellectual property, as it pertains to fostering innovation, is covered under Sustainable Development Goal 9, which is to build resilient infrastructure, to promote sustainable industrialization, and to foster innovation. 
as we venture into the last decade of the implementation of the 2030 agenda, the world is now challenged with exposure to the next generation of technologies in every field from biotechnology, by bio blockchain and digital connectivity to material science, artificial intelligence, and more. And currently COVID-19 has pre presented newer challenges for us to find innovative ways to address the global challenge that we now face. In ratifying the Paris Convention and the Madrid system, Fiji is taking steps to, to counter these challenges that we have. And also, as we ratify the Paris Convention, Fiji will now join 176 other countries, including countries from the Pacific region, PNG, Tonga, and Samoa. And our ratification of the, of the Madrid system together with the convention offers a holistic measure and protection for, inter, for, Fijian, for Fijian intellectual property. I wish to reiterate um, the, ministry's, the ministry's submission on this two um, key multilateral treaties in saying that these treaties align with Fiji's strategic objectives of global leadership at the various regional and multilateral forums. Fiji has ratified four conventions of human rights, of international labor organizations, conventions among other key international instruments. Last year, we also were the first to ratify the Singapore Convention on the use of mediation for cross-border commercial transactions. In keeping with this momentum, it would be beneficial for Fiji to ratify the Paris Convention and the Madrid system accordingly. Distinguished Chair and members of the committee, it is our recommendation that Fiji become, be a contracting party to both the Paris Convention and the Madrid system including the Madrid, which includes the Madrid Agreement and the protocol for the purpose of easing uh, the process of doing business in Fiji and protecting intellectual property in Fiji and abroad. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I will, um, if, if uh, the committee wishes to raise any issues or any discussions, um, you welcome it, um, but if there are, if the committee wishes to reserve its uh, its comments for the end of the presentation, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Gibson to present on the the protocol. Yes, yes, please. We will uh, we will reserve uh, questions or discussions uh, to the uh, very end of your your entire submission. Thank you. Naka chair. Thank you, chair, and honourable members of the committee. Uh, my presentation this morning is on the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the Involvement of Children in Armed Conflict. By way of background, Fiji signed the Convention on the Rights of the Child on 2nd July 1993 and ratified the CRC on 13th August 1993. The optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the Involvement of Children in Armed Conflict is an international instrument that states parties to the CRC may ratify. The optional protocol aims to protect children from recruitment and use in hostilities. It is adopted by the General Assembly on 25 May 2000 and entered into force on 12 February 2002. In terms of the scope of the convention, the optional protocol is a commitment to increase the protection of children from involvement in armed conflict and requires five considerations listed in your paper A to E. A, states will not recruit children under the age of 18 years to send them to the battlefield. B, states will not conscript soldiers under the age of 18 years. C, states will take all possible measures to prevent such recruitment including legislation to prohibit and criminalize the recruitment of children under the age of 18 and involve them in hostilities. D, states will demobilize anyone under the age of 18 years conscripted or used in hostilities and will provide physical, psychological recovery services and help their social reintegration. Finally, armed groups 
distinct from the armed forces of a country, should not, under any circumstances, recruit or use in hostilities anyone under the age of 18 years. Distinguished members, as of 26 May 2020, 170 countries have ratified the optional protocol. There are 17 countries that have neither signed nor ratified, and 10 countries that have signed but are yet to ratify. Fiji signed the optional protocol on 16 September 2005 and has yet to ratify the optional protocol. Allow me now to discuss the applicable national policies to the optional protocol. Given that Fiji is party to the CRC and signed on 16 September 2005, our ratification will further strengthen Fiji's commitments and obligations under the CRC and complement relevant existing national laws and policies. The Employment Relations Act 2007 prohibits forced labor of children. The Act defines a child as a person who is under the age of 18 years and defines forced labor as including any work or service exacted in accordance with compulsory military service laws or work of a purely military character. Therefore, consistent with the optional protocol, the laws of Fiji prohibit compulsory military service of children under the age of 18 years. With respect to the age of eligibility for military service, Section 7.3 of the Republic of Fiji Military Act 1949 provides that no person who is under the age of 18 years must be enlisted in the military forces, provided that the commander of the RFMF may permit the enlistment of such number of persons of or above the age of 16 years. Fiji's established age of eligibility is consistent with optional protocols call for a set minimum age of voluntary recruitment. If children before below the age of 18 are enlisted, the optional protocol further requires that safeguards are implemented to ensure that they do not take part in direct hostilities. To the best of our knowledge, Fiji meets this criteria as it does not engage officers under the age of 18 years in direct hostilities. Therefore, consistent with the optional protocol, the laws of Fiji prohibit compulsory military service of children under the age of 18 and provide an effective legal framework for ensuring compliance with the minimum requirements of the optional protocol. Distinguished members, Fiji's legacy in peacekeeping is in itself a remarkable feat. It has arguably been the catalyst for our elevation in the international community and our global leadership foreign policy strategy. Fiji's ratification of the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the involvement of children in armed conflict is in line with her legacy. It is not only consistent with the laws of Fiji, but it also reflects the truly Fijian value system of protection for our children and our commitment to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, we have your your uh, the, your last sub submission. Thank you. So is that it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you all, uh, the pre presenters, um, for uh, your informative uh, submission uh, this uh, this morning. Uh, Honourable members, do you have any uh, questions uh, for for the uh, submitters? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Honourable uh, uh, Pio. Honourable yeah, thank Pio. you, Chair. Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the uh, our presenters today from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, um, in terms of the first presentation on the um, <clears throat> uh, um, on the Madrid Protocol, eh? Uh, how much does the uh, how much does the ministry expect in terms of uh, you know um, revenue uh, will the Fiji government get uh, you know through the harmonization of uh, this um, 
sorry, you know, uh, when we accede to this protocol, because right now, um, much much of our uh, much of the, uh, the the what do you call the um, the IP uh, applications in Fiji are from locals. Eh? Uh, we have very little coming from abroad. Uh, you know, you say okay, we we will be compatible with so many other hundreds of countries around the world uh, that have will be signing into this protocol or have signed in. But what significant gain will we get? You know, uh, because we're talking about here benefit. Okay, the benefit of being with the rest of the world is one thing. But what about benefit to our people? Uh, benefit in terms of revenue. You know, we keep asking that question. So, I'm interested in your thoughts. Honourable uh, Honourable Minister, uh, sorry, Honourable, Honourable Member, if I may be allowed to uh, to take this question, um, the Solicitor General's Office uh, they look after this particular area of uh, the the Convention. However, how we how we will work from from now on to ensure that knowledge and uh, intellectual knowledge, especially that belongs to our people, how do we ensure that we protect? These uh, these knowledge and innovative practices that belongs to uh, segments of our community or individuals. I think this is something that we will work through through this current regime, and to ensure that our people are safeguarded against uh, theft of of their knowledge. So I think uh, it's for us we will need to work through understanding the full benefits uh, and how we can access the uh, the full returns for the benefits of our people and we'll need to work closely with the uh, solicitor general's office to work through a, a proper formula so that um, the benefits come back to uh, to our communities uh, and it's really to safeguard against uh, intellectual property theft okay i, I leave that one there um my second question is on uh, the optional protocol for the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And um, I'm interested again, I pose this question to many others that have uh, come before us. And I'm interested in your thoughts uh, here, particularly from uh, Foreign Affairs, because I'm, 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 I got the impression from your presentation that, uh, that you are quite okay uh, with um, uh, with the um, what's the word um, with the powers of the commander to recruit uh, soldiers between the age of 16 and 18, and um, uh, I, I just want to know uh, as far as the protocol is concerned, uh, do you believe that uh, Fiji's position in terms of ratification? Would be in a much better position if we actually review those laws to to not allow any conscription. Well, we do not have conscription, but any voluntary recruitment into the RFMF of uh, children below the age of 18. Would it would it be more um, uh, perhaps uh, you know of a higher regard for Fiji if it actually did that? I'm I'm interested to know your views. Honourable um, member of the uh, committee, uh, the RFMF Act is uh, is quite clear um, on the age eligibility of military service section 73, um, and I think it seems to be working uh, very well. And the Fiji meets this criteria as it does not engage officers under the age of uh, 18 in areas of uh, direct uh, hostilities. So I think the uh, Anything below the age of uh, 18 um, might be contrary to the uh, Fiji military, uh, the RFMF Act of 1949. And uh, I, I, from, from a ministry, ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, perspective, the, our, our coming on board in support of this, uh, this optional protocol is very much uh, attuned to international uh, best practice. Uh, that's all, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Honorable uh, Dr. Selig Govin.
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I'd also like to thank the presenters uh, for their comprehensive presentation. Uh, I'd just like to know the draft bill, which has been uh, <coughs> uh, presented to Cabinet on trademarks and uh, intellectual property rights, when it is expected to be put to Parliament for debate. Is there any time frame for that? Thank you. Um, thank you, Honourable Member. Um, in terms of the timeline for the submission of the bill um, to Parliament, we will be guided by the, the parliamentary process that will be undertaken in terms of uh, um, the timeline that bills are submitted. You happy there, uh, Honourable uh, Dr. Salik? Fine. Okay, thank you, Honourable Selai. No, okay, Honourable Members, uh, thank thank you. Um, I wish to take the opportunity to say uh, thank you again to Mr. Peter Emerson and uh, and the team from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, for uh, acceding to uh, our request to come before us this uh, this this hour. Um, and um, uh, should we have any other pre pressing uh, questions, um, if you would oblige. Uh, the secretariat uh, writing to your good selves by through email. Um, I, I thank you again, and if you have any uh, departing remarks, uh, the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Emerson. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair and, and distinguished members of this committee. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to come before you, and we look forward to receiving uh, further queries should you wish for us to make these clarifications. Thank you again, sir. Thank you, and uh, you have yourselves a blessed afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Members.